What is the main thesis moving along behind the stab in the back theory? Uh, well, that's the second uh, of my chapters, Ari. So um, the stab in the back, uh, I don't know how many Wagner fans there are in Israel these days, um, but uh, leaving aside the whole issue of Wagner's anti-Semitism, a key point in his ring cycle is at, towards the end where the villain Hagen stabs the hero Siegfried uh, in the back uh, because Siegfried is brave and cannot be defeated by a kind of full frontal assault. And so Siegfried dies and you have the twilight of the gods and so on. Uh, that's a stab in the back. And that was an image used uh, at the end of World War I uh, by uh, army generals in particular and the extreme nationalist right to explain how Germany was defeated in World War I when the Germans were led to believe by the army that they'd been winning all along. As you know, it was a stalemate. Uh, no, neither side seemed to be winning until 1918. Uh, America and the United States had come into the war in 1917. It took a while to get the troops trained and troop cross and get the equipment and so on. But in the spring of 1918, the uh, Germans had defeated the Russians. There'd been two revolutions in Russia and the Bolsheviks led by Lenin had sued for peace at any price. Russia was in a terrible state. So the Germans were able to transfer huge numbers of troops from the Eastern Front to the Western Front and launch the spring offensive. But there's two factors in um, the military, in, in, in the state of the military at the time. One is barbed wire and the other is a machine gun and between them they dominated the war up to that point defense you just couldn't get past them and so it was in the spring offensive eventually it petered out it couldn't get past the machine guns trenches barbed wire of the western allies and the germans started to run out of material and men and were pushed back in the summer of 1918 huge numbers of fresh american troops are now coming onto the battlefields the, above all, the Allies had tanks, which there's no resistance. So all of a sudden, not any announcement at all, the, the leading general, Ludendorff, Erich Ludendorff, told the government, it's no good, we're not going to win. Uh, I, I have to say, we've got to sue for peace before it's too late. And so they did. And it was very sudden, announced very late. Everyone in Germany was shocked and surprised. And a lot of people on the nationalist right explained this by saying uh, that the army wasn't defeated. It was stabbed in the back by socialists and communists uh, and Democrats and on the home front uh, and a kind of subversion. And one extreme version of this was the idea, the claim that it was Jews who'd masterminded the stab in the back. The home front failed, the military front did not, but it was too much for them. Um, and that was taken up then by the extreme right in the Weimar Republic and the Democratic Republic founded uh, as a result of the defeat, the defeat of the Kaiser and the authoritarian system that he ran. Uh, and um, it was a, a central belief, I think, of, of Hitler and, and the Nazis. It inspired their belief that if they're going to fight another war, which Hitler intended to do from the very moment he began in politics, a war to reverse the results of World War I, then you had to somehow get rid of subversion at home. There was to be no second stab in the back. And that's the belief that powered his attempts from when he came to power in 1933 to uh, the war, 1939 to 40, to drive the Jews out of Germany. In fact, the Jews in Germany were more patriotic than, than the average German. Uh, the, many Jews had fought on the front in World War uh, One, they were, on the whole, moderate, liberal to conservative uh, citizens in Germany. And I think it was recognized by the titular head of the army in World War I, Hindenburg, uh, who became, Field Marshal Hindenburg, who became um, the head of state in the Weimar Republic. And when Hitler uh, passed a law dismissing Jewish civil servants, from uh, teachers, lawyers, and all the rest of it, 
uh, in, in 1933, Hindenburg said, uh, you can only do it if you don't dismiss the Jews who have a good war record. Um, so uh, that's a stab in the back. And then the, the Nazis believed in it, but they were very careful about using it in their propaganda because <clears throat> they wanted in the late 20s, early 30s to win over the votes of the middle classes, including millions of people who'd been civilians in Germany on the home front, and they did not want to offend them by saying, you stabbed the army in the back. So they went pretty easy on it. 